Angeles, prime time, tonight after football. Hey, what's it? Oh, we haven't seen these ones. You want to see these ones, don't you? Don't take them. Okay. Look, let's look. Will you listen to me? You've said enough. What's the matter? May I please use your phone? Yes, of course. No. I am calling a taxi. You're not going anywhere. Well, don't tell me what to do. Look, can we talk about this? I am not listening to any more stupid stories. Will I make something like this up? Ah, I wouldn't put it past you. Order Mr. the truth. Oh, really? So then I'm a liar? Yes. Well, no. I mean, well, it's not quite that simple. Oh, yes, it is. Only you will not accept it. You're denying the facts here. The facts? here is that you have had it in for me from the beginning. I have. Now you have really I have oh proof. Lord. Well, if you don't back off, I am calling the police. Then be my guest. Um, darling, oh, I think it's time you got some more pumpkin pie from the kitchen, okay? Try to do be the right like thing. Oh, I'll make your bloody phone right. call, all right? That does it. Uh, excuse me, um, could we just take a walk, please? Where are we going? Neutral ground. Uh, just a minute. Is he your pimp? No, Your Honor. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely not that. Then who is he? Just an interested observer, determined to see that justice is served in this case. You're not the salesman she was in the room with. No, Your Honor. I haven't seen the defendant in years. Remand the defendants into the city lockup until the fine is paid, by whomsoever, and necessary papers are completed. Uh, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Well, do you think you can clarify this rather extraordinary development? I do. My name is Scotty Baldwin. I'm an attorney practicing in this city. And I would like to request that the defendants be released into my custody until such time that they are allowed to go free. Mr. Baldwin, you may in fact be precisely who you say you are. On the other hand, as far as I know, you may be the man in the moon. And what does it matter? If I pay the fine and they're willing to come with me? Is that what you both wish? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Very well, so be it. Now, I'm not so sure that I should have released you. But since, frankly, I'm tired of seeing you all around here, next case. <laughs> McIntyre versus temporary... Come on, let's go. This is the right here. Is it really you? Just in the nick of time, huh? <laughs> you are easily the last person I ever expected to come to my rescue. Oh, you want me to go back in and tell the judge I changed no, my mind? No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't think so. How the hell did you ever wind up here? Well, I was about to ask you the same thing. I think we got a little catching up to do. Yes, yes, what? Don't try to talk. No, I, I, can, I can hardly breathe. <laughs> Don't stop looking at each other and level with me. You're a very sick man. I've been sick for many months. He's going to be just fine, isn't he? Oh, I knew it. No, 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 don't go jumping to conclusions. I want to know the truth. Now, is this goodbye? If it is, then I have arrangements to make. Uh, I, am I dying? Well, it's, it's impossible to say oh, exactly. Answer me! Yes, Herbert, you may well be dying. I'll be back. Alan, it doesn't look good. Oh, really? Herbert's had a seizure. Oh, oh no. Phone an ambulance. Wait! What happened? You see, uh... Herbert wants to talk to you right away. I'm just about to phone an ambulance. Not yet, Alan. Hurry. Well, but I should be with him. Sure. Not now, Quentin. How, uh, how sick is the scoundrel, anyway? Oh, Edward. Well, dying Edward. doesn't make him a saint. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Edward, you're gonna carry a grudge right to the bitter end, aren't you? Herbert is in very bad shape. You wouldn't be saying that just to make me feel better. Edward, it's the second time. I must get upstairs. Well, this calls for a... 
Edward! Don't you A moment of silence for dear cousin Herbert. May he rest in peace. You'll just have to wait. We're going to have to wait for the uh, case file to come in from the courtroom. Then we can go? Well, I'm sure they'll find other ways to delay your release. Mm. So, where were we, Bobby? Well, I guess I was telling you how I ended up in this mess. Yeah, you were chasing a girl named Melissa. Yeah. I met her mother when we were both in physical therapy. What happened to you? Well, that's a long story. I had to learn how to walk all over again. I leave town, the whole place falls apart. As I recall, you weren't exactly the glue that held us all together. Why don't you go back to your story? Well, Martha left Melissa and Melissa's younger brother with me. She had to go to Colorado for some treatment, and everything was fine for a while. And then Melissa got mixed up with some punks. I guess they were pretty rowdy kids. I was one of them. And the whole group got into some pretty bad trouble one night over at, at Kelly's. Yeah. And uh, as a result, Melissa and Lori ran away. Yeah, big mistake. And they ended up here in Miami in a prostitution ring. And I decided to uh, pose as a high-class call girl to infiltrate and save them. <laughs> Just like the old days, huh, Bobby? Uh, brought back a flood of bad memories. So then the... Um... Cops, they busted into some house and... Well, yeah, after I managed to tip them off, and it's a good thing, too. I had a $500 job <laughs> waiting for me at the time. <laughs> oh, the salesman, huh? Yeah, uh, good old Ray. Yeah, well, I bet good old Ray does his shopping by phone, huh? Let's his fingers do the walking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. I was scared to death. I'd run out of ways to stall him. Uh, at any rate, yesterday, my brilliant plan blew up in my face because not only did I manage to not find Melissa, I also got Lori and myself arrested. Yeah, lucky for us, you were around. Well, I've always had a soft spot for hookers with hearts of gold. Can't thank you enough. What are old friends for? I guess now we just have to pray that Melissa's all right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Baldwin, I have some forms for you to fill out. <laughs> Triplicate, no doubt. Hang in there, girls. Who is this guy, anyway? You heard the name, Scotty Baldwin. We used to know each other. He used to live in Port Charles? Several years ago. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you two are the best of friends. <laughs> Hardly. Right now, I could kiss Scotty. Mm. And somehow, I can't help wondering where all this is leading. You could say this is really our first Thanksgiving together, you know. New family, new house. Uh, today's very special. I could tell. You all seem to enjoy each other's company so much. Well, we've had our fair share of fights, too. I think it's part of growing closer, in a way. Well, in that case, Robert and I should be best friends. What did he say that upset you so much when you went outside? Maybe you should ask him. I'm asking you. Well, you're his partner, his friend. Who are you going to believe? Why don't you try and convince me? Well, uh, basically, Robert told me that my benefactor the man who has done more for me than anyone is a liar and a crook. Herbert Quartermain? Yes. Robert claims that, uh, that Bertie embezzled money from his own company and paid my father, Taylor Clayton, $500,000 to go to prison for him. After father died, Supposedly, Bertie took the money back. So, according to Robert, my father's estate was cheated out of half a million dollars. And subsequently, you were cheated out of the money, too. Well, that's not all. Robert is convinced 
that I have known about Bertie's double dealing all along. I mean, he thinks that I have lied to him about that and about, about God knows what else. He even suspects that I am the one trying to kill Bertie. Out of revenge? So you do agree with him? I knew No, I don't agree with anyone, Autumn. And I'm sure that Robert hasn't closed his case either. He has locked the door and thrown away the key. Oh, I know sometimes Robert can come on very strong. But he's the fairest man I know. And he will give you every chance to clear yourself if you just talk to him. Robert only hears what he wants to hear. Robert only hears the truth and he will get it one way or the other. So why don't you just make it easier for both of you? Oh, it was my pleasure. No, actually, it was a great afternoon. Uh, so sweet of the laborers to invite us. Yeah, it seems as if Robin and Susie have become fast friends. Yeah. I'm glad Susie has a little girl to play with now. She needs more female influences in her life. Mm -hmm. Well, anytime you're ready to move in. <laughs> Andy, Andy, um, what about your operation? Huh? What about it? When are you going to have it? <sighs> Soon. It's just that I need to work Wait, things... Wait, you haven't been telling me the truth, have you? About what? You practiced with the team today, didn't you? Okay, I, I ran around a bit You're short, crazy. but... crazy! Listen, baby, you worry too much. Don't you know what you could do to yourself, huh? Come Practice on, makes perfect! You don't plan on discussing this at all, do you? Whatever gave you that idea? Andy, you have to take it seriously. It's your life, come mm. on! You... Listen, baby, I have to run. But... We're gonna talk about it, I and... promise you. Goodbye. But... Uh, I'm, um, I'm sorry about that scene with Autumn. Yeah. Well, you two seem to go at it pretty regularly. Tell me, is it love? Well, <clears throat> more like hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think it's... I think that's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta say that all of them does make life interesting. I mean, just when I think I'm getting a line on her, she'll go out and do something, and suddenly I'll realize that I don't know very much about her at all. Excuse me. Oh, Tom, hello. Oh, hello, Duke. What brings you by? Well, I just stopped by to see Simone. Is she still here? No, she, uh, she left a little while ago with Andy. Well, she didn't go home with him. Well, you know, I really don't know. Why don't you come in and telephone and see? Uh, no, no, I won't disturb you any longer. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank see you. you uh, bye. Well, there's another couple that don't exactly be seeing eye to eye. Uh, I think Simon's giving Tom the runaround. Now, what is it? Are women born with the ability to do that to men, or do they learn it somehow? <laughs> I don't know, just when you feel that they're telling you the truth, there's a little bell goes off in the back of your head and you ask yourself, what really are they thinking? You know, it's almost as if... It's almost as if they can see right through us. You know, and when you, you have all the facts in the world at your fingertips, it's still not enough to convince them that you're, that you're right. <laughs> so are women, do you think, uh mysterious by nature, or are we men folks just naturally dumb? Which is it? Whatever. We don't seem to be able to win. I mean, when you're logical, they get emotional. When you try to appeal to their feelings, they accuse you of trying to manipulate them. Oh, yeah. I wish we knew how. Whatever happened to the days when the simple truth was enough? You know, I think that was a little before my time. You know... I'm only looking for a few straight answers here. Why should I have to play a game to find them? Where is it written that men and women can't... I was just going to make a turkey sandwich. Okay, you're not bothering us. Well, how come when you saw me come in and you suddenly got real quiet? I think we 
I just think we just ran out of, of words to say, Did, did we, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it, it was just a um, natural pause in the conversation. Yes. Right in the middle of your sentence? <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> Why don't you go fix your snack? I can't wait till I grow up and I can keep secrets from kids, too. <laughs> Oh, what a great pair. I mean, we can't even put one over a young child. I mean, no wonder women make total fools of us. Yeah, and yet we keep coming back for more. <sighs> so tell me, Robert, what's the next round on the, uh, Clayton Scorpio bar? Well, I think I'm out for the count. However, I don't have a towel to throw in. I think if you had one, you probably wouldn't. I know you better than that. No, I think no matter how many mysterious women come along, you'll still let them use you as a dog. It's no use. It's all over. I can feel it. We don't know that's all over yet. We're not going to find out if you don't give me a chance to examine you properly. You understand? Well, what's wrong is that I'm dying. What are we going to do with him? Obviously, he doesn't want to be examined. <sighs> Frankly, from what I can tell, I'm inclined to agree with him. Oh, if only I'd had time to change my will. <laughs> can we discuss that later? Later? I don't have any laters. I don't think this is the proper setting to be talking about money to you, not even for a quarter man. So Edward finally wins. <laughs> yes, you, you and Edward get your money back, your millions, plus profits. Are you happy now? Let me tell you something. The money is one thing, your health is quite another. No, 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 you're mistaken there, don't you see that? Yes, that suddenly they become inseparable. My doom is your salvation. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Can we please change the subject? Whatever I think about you as a human being, Herbert, has nothing to do with the way I treat you as a patient. Be careful, doctor. A conflict of interest. Oh, shut up. I'm going to call an ambulance. No, absolutely not. I refuse to spend my last few moments listening to some damn fool with a stethoscope telling me that how something I already know. And what am I going to do for you? Get the family in here. I'd like to say goodbye to them. Herbert, you could do that just as well in the hospital. Would you deny a dying man his last request? <sighs> Very well. I know I, I, it's all over. Can, can you get the family in here? I'd like to say goodbye. Right. Days. Okay, fill out the forms, paid the fine. Can we go? As soon as I process the paperwork. Well, how long is that going to take? Not long. I was the best typist in my class. The best in your class? I said the best, not the fastest. What were you graded on? Posture? Sorry about the delay, but... This guy makes molasses look like lightning. Well, I hope we're not going to be here much longer, because I've got to find Melissa. Corey's out there someplace, too. I just hope they can hold on until we find them. So what have you been up to since we saw each other last? Just trying to live down my sordid past. Have you succeeded? I don't blame you if you want to hold a grudge. Actually, if I did, most of it vanished this afternoon. What you did for us today makes up for a lot of nastiness. Surrender peace offering. I feel like I owe you one. Let's just call it you. We did have our wars, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did shake up poor Charles a little bit. <laughs> you were certainly a worthy foe. <laughs> I've never seen anyone who could fight quite that dirty. Except maybe you. Guess it takes one to know one, huh? You know, funny thing. You miss those days. <laughs> I can say that. I know. I miss them, too. They were certainly exciting, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Well, look at us now. I mean, we're becoming sort of respectable. And... <laughs> this is respectable, huh? <laughs> well, I guess you haven't changed a bit, then. 
Well, I'm very happy to say that you have. Scott. You uh, not only turned over a new leaf, but you seem to have shaken up the entire tree. Well, sometimes you gotta do that. Yeah. So, how's the new setting working out? Oh, well, you know, Miami here, it's, uh, it gets hot. Sometimes I miss the change of seasons back in Port Charles. Is that good or bad? Both. Now, let's see, when I left town, you were married to Brock. Now you're married to Jake Meyer. How did, how, how did this all happen? Uh, it's a long story. <laughs> well, I think we got a little time. Oh, I don't even know. Bobby! Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, oh thank God you're all right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. It's all right. Well? Go talk to you. Good, then tell her to get out here. Only if you can discuss this calmly and objectively, and apparently you can't. <sighs> look, when I require knowledge as to how to look after one of the clients, I'll phone you. You have to put on kick gloves or she doesn't come out, okay? I'm sorry if, uh, if I do any unfair or you do any unfair conclusions as to what I learned in New York. I didn't mean to imply that you had any ulterior motives here. I, I apologize. Can we talk about this uh, further? Well, I'd like that, but not here. Is there some place we can talk? Absolutely. I think that means we're going. I want to thank you both for inviting us. Yes, it was just what I needed. Thank you for having me. Oh, good. I'm glad you had a nice time, and I hope the discussion proves to be relaxing and all that you need to agree. Good night, too. Good night. Yep. Thank you. Mine, too? Yes. Uh, listen, give Robin a big kiss and a hug from me. Oh, all I right. will. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, and tell her I'm working on having one less secret. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that about secrets? I think they've fallen for each other, you know. Did he say something? No, he didn't have to say anything. Total stranger could say it. I think she feels the same way. I mean, how else could he work her up the way he did? You're right. Anything will go anywhere, then. Why, because of this investigation? Yeah, I mean, whatever way you look at it. Her involvement with Herbert Quartermain is kind of suspicious, and he still has to regard her as some kind of a murder suspect before he can think of her in any other way. <clears throat> I suppose even the strongest relationship could crumble under circumstances like that. If they'd met under different circumstances, perhaps they would have stood a chance, but as it is, she's up to her neck in it. I only have a few moments left. Oh, nonsense. You'll be around for a long time. Let me speak. Thank you. I, I have one final request. Anything, Father. Yes, uh, I want my body cremated immediately after I pass away. You can have yourself burned at the stake for all I care. Edward, Edward, show a little respect. Oh, why should he start now? And when I say immediately, I mean it. Yes, I don't want my body lying around after my soul is gone. I wouldn't be in any hurry to rush after my soul where you're going. I understand they're having a heat wave Edward, down there. Edward, stop you. My only regret is there isn't time to cut you out of my will. Father, we could call our lawyer over right away. Oh, no, it's too late for that. Oh, it's just not fair. Herbert has so much to live for. Why does he have to be taken from us now? Well, he's not doing an awful lot to help himself. Won't you let us call an ambulance? Oh, I appreciate your concern, Monica. It's quite unusual coming from your side of the family. Well, so you will let us help you. Perhaps the hospital would be a good idea. Herbert. <laughs> 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 General Hospital will continue in a moment. 
May he rest in peace. Get you the bathroom. Yes. Yes. It's funny about this. What do you mean? Well, his, his death. Doesn't it strike you as puzzling? Why? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think he ought to have an autopsy. Why? Well, to find out just exactly how we died. Well, the man had a brain tumor. We've known for weeks that it was going to kill him. I'm just glad that he passed on peacefully. Yes, uh, Herbert had very little pain at the end. We should all be so fortunate. What do we do now? I'll take full responsibility. You're going to sign the death certificate? Yes, and uh, take care of the cremation. Well, Father's already made the arrangements. Yes, I know. I have all the information and the phone number. Well, I suppose we have to carry out his wishes. Dr. Wallace, would you please contact the crematorium immediately? And if my father wanted a speedy disposal, he's going to get it. Come on, darling. <laughs> hoping I'd find you here. And not at Andy's, huh? Well, the thought never crossed my mind. You want to come in? Well, I, I... I can't really stay, but... I was on my way home, and I decided to stop by and wish you a happy <clears throat> Thanksgiving. Thank you. How was the celebration at Kelly's? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All that was lacking was you. Well, kind of had fun at the Lavery's, but... I missed you today, Simone. I kept thinking the entire afternoon that we should have been together. I also want to say that despite all the problems, and even if you've fallen in love with Andy, what I'm most thankful for today is having you as part of my life. I feel the same way, too. And I don't love Andy. You could have fooled me. Oh, Tom, Andy just needs a friend right now. He needs somebody to help him straighten this whole thing out. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just worried that he might do something drastic. I, I, I must be seeing things. Oh, you mean me? Yeah. Weren't you Andy Matthews? <laughs> yeah. Hey! It's a real pleasure meeting you, man. I've been a fan of yours for years. Thanks a lot. Listen, my name's Angel. I run this place for Duke. Oh, yeah? Well, you're just a man I need to talk to. Hey, let me buy you a drink. I mean, I feel I owe you after all the pleasure you've given me, huh? Uh, no thanks. Listen, I'm, uh, looking to play some bets. Here? Yeah, you take action here, don't you? No. No way. Wait a minute. This is a Scotsman's place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Duke is Scottish. But there's no betting in this club. Uh-uh. I mean, we ran a little pool once for spare change. But, pal, that's history. I mean, if you want to bet, you got to go to Atlantic City. I was kind of out to do it on a sly. Hey, I'm sorry. Now, how about that beer, courtesy of the house? What do you say? No, thanks. Maybe later. Okay, you got it. I understand you're looking for the Scotsman. Yeah, that's right. You know where I can find him? You just did. So you're the Scotsman. That's my DBA, doing business as. But the real name is Carruthers. Yeah. I'm Andy Matthews. Oh, I know, I know. I've seen you play many times. Won a lot of money on you, too. Well, I'm hoping to do the same for myself. Mm -hmm. So why don't you use your real name around here? Well, as you already heard, uh, Lavery's keeping kind of a low profile here. He doesn't want anybody to know I'm making book in the penthouse. I want to lay down and bet on my team for this game coming up. Oh, Wednesday night. That's going to be a big game. And they're televising it, which is pretty unusual midweek. Yeah, the whole season could come down to this one game. My whole future rests on it. Have you seen the Vegas line? 
doesn't look good, does it? Oh, it's horrible. It's ten to one against you guys. You know something that the experts don't? I know that I'm going to put on the performance of my life. If I do, we win. So how much are you prepared to lose? <laughs> Twenty-five grand. Now listen, if that's a bit too steep for you, I'll find somebody who can handle it. No, 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 hold on. I'm not about to turn down an easy 25,000. You want to go upstairs and make this official? After you. Miss, what'll you have? I'll uh, have a glass of white wine, please. All right. Uh, you wouldn't have any um, uh, Aussie beer here, would you? <laughs> In a Scottish pub? I had to ask. Uh, listen, I'll have some of that uh, pommy stuff, all right? Okay, you got it. <clears throat> now, where were we? Right where we started. Look, I'm a detective. Now, I accumulate evidence, I sift through it, I dispense with the junk. Then I make a decision. Based on fact, not fiction. Always. It's, uh, it's no secret that I guess I'm rather fond of you. That's not going to stop me from busting my back to find out what's going on over at the Quartermain Mansion. And you've got to understand why you might be under suspicion, along with everybody else in that house. Look, I'll only say what I've said before. Until you brought it up, I never heard a word about any deal between Bertie and my father. All I know is that Bertie's been like a father to me. I can't tell you how it hurts to see him tormented by those vultures he calls family. Well, their opinion of you is no less flattering. Well, it's obvious we are not going to, uh, clear up this disagreement tonight. But one of these days, you'll know I'm telling the truth. I hope so. So do I, for both our sakes. I, uh, I care about you too. What kind of future can there be if there's no trust? Here's to a uh, better tomorrow. And to trust. To trust. Hi, darling, it's me. Well, I might have known I'd get your answering machine. You better not be out on the town without me. Oh, Jake, I have the most wonderful news. I found Melissa, and she's fine. And I also managed to round up Greg and Corey and Lori, and everybody's fine. And, um, well, just contact their parents as soon as possible. Uh, You're a free woman. I, I, it's been qu quite a few days. You're actually never going to guess where I am right now, but I'll tell you about all of that later. It seems that it is the height of the tourist season here in Miami, so we're having a little problem getting plane reservations. But uh, we're going to head over to the airport now. We're probably able to get something on standby, so I'll call you later with the arrival time. I love you. I can't wait to be back with you again. I'm really glad that this whole ordeal is finally over. I'll see you soon. Bye. Jack was out. It's a good thing he wasn't home. You'd been on the phone forever. Yeah. Well, I do have some stories to tell. When you get home, show him this outfit. I'm sure he'll spring for the 500 bucks. Oh, well, no charge for Jake. I owe you some money. Uh, for the plane and the 100 for the fine. And... It's okay. I'm in no rush for the money. Any chance you think you might get back to Port Charles? You never know, Bobby. I, uh, got a soft spot right here for the old hometown. You really mean that? You really think you might come back sometime? 
I just might. Now I think we ought to get to the airport, because the sooner you and your pals get on the standby list, the sooner you can wing your way back to Fort Charles. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad this whole ordeal is over. Anybody want to go home? Yes! <laughs> Lala, what's wrong? What's happened? Autumn, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, it's not Bertie. Yes, it's Autumn. He died a few hours ago. Oh, no. Murder? No. No, natural causes. You sure? Of course we're sure. My father's brain tumor finally proved too much for him, that's all. Where's the body? I'd like to see it. It's too late. Too late? What's that supposed to mean? It means that it's been taken to the crematorium. Already? My father's last wish was that he be cremated immediately upon passing. He must have been still warm. Well, I wish you'd show a little respect to my father. I'm not the one that couldn't wait to get rid of him. Now, listen. Listen, I don't like this. I don't like any of it. It stinks, in fact. Now, where's the number of the crematorium? It's on the pad right there by the phone. Yes, it's uh, Robert Scorpio here. I'm uh, calling about the, the very recently deceased Herbert Quartermain. That's right. I don't suppose at this point you've gotten a ra That fast, eh? Yes, yes, I'm aware of what he requested. Uh, uh, that'll be all, thank you. I have never heard of anything like this happening in such a short period of time. But what else can I tell you, Mr. Scorpio? My father simply didn't want to be a burden to the rest of his family. It is true, Robert. He insisted on being cremated as soon as possible. I don't like it. Well, it wasn't your body. I don't like any of it. In fact, this whole thing stinks. Who are you calling now? The police. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night, precious. Sleep tight. Don't let the cranberries bite. Oh, very funny. How seasonal is this child? How seasonal. Close the door. Okay, bye-bye. Brush your teeth. Clean your teeth. Oh. Oh. What a day. Oh. Yeah. It's not quite over yet, is it? Oh, dear. Don't tell me there's some other Scottish tradition I've forgotten about. Oh. So happens it's a very important one. Oh, dare I ask? It's all very well to celebrate family gatherings and large crowds, but there's one thing you have to celebrate in private. What might that be? Hmm, I thought you might ask. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of difficult to... It's difficult to put it into words. Maybe I could demonstrate. I thought perhaps you would. <laughs> First of all, we've got to turn the lights down. And then we have to, to get prepared. Anything I can do. You know, it's my turn. I do promise you, you will enjoy it, though. Mr. Scorpio, is this necessary? To me, it is completely unnecessary. You know, I absolutely agree with you. What are you trying to prove, Scorpio? Summon everyone. Why? Because I said so. Now do it now. Give me a break. Huh? Give me a break. You're awfully quiet. What do you expect? Some answers. You don't think I had anything to do with this? No, you were with me all afternoon. You couldn't have killed Herbert. Killed him? But you may have kept me from somebody who could have. Oh, I don't believe this. What makes you think Bertie was murdered? He died of natural causes. Is that true? Of course. Complications from the brain tumor. You agree, Alan? Yes. So you examined the body yourself? Yes, no. 
No, not exactly. What is this, a multiple choice answer? I tried to examine him, but he resisted. So what you're telling me is that you took Dr. Wallace's word for the cause of death. Why shouldn't I? I don't. Why not? Because the circumstances are awfully curious. Oh, wait a minute. I was there at the end. I saw light pass out of his beady little eyes. Oh, there's nothing well, unusual stop, all about so... it. Really? You know, I'm not so sure. We have this for one thing. It's wet. So it smells like uh, antacid. Kind of thing you might purchase over a drugstore counter. That's exactly what it is. I prescribed it for Herbert myself. Mm -hmm. Where's the bottle it came from? Huh? What? I haven't this, any idea. This so-called antacid is uh, a little different. It's got a sharp metallic odor to it, something I haven't encountered before. Have you, Doctor? Mm, not in an antacid, no. Care to give it the taste test, Alan? What are you getting at, Scorpio? I suspect if any of you were to drink a small portion of the, this liquid, you'd be as dead as Herbert. What? what? You can't add. It. Well, it uh, has an additive in it, the sort of thing you might find in rat poison. The sort oh, of thing that you would uh, perhaps find in a boat shed or maybe a tool shed or maybe other buildings on an estate of this size. So then you really are suggesting... I'm not suggesting anything. But I'm telling you, Herbert may not have died from natural causes. He may have been murdered. Oh, after that's all. outrageous. No more outrageous than the fact that the body was disposed of so quickly. Why? To stop the police looking at it? Perhaps to perform an autopsy? For what now? Call the police. We'll stick around and wait for them, see what they think. In the meantime, nothing in this room is to be touched, and nobody is to leave the premises. Is that clear? This is... Surely you can't suspect Quentin or me. <laughs> I suspect each and every one of you. Help me narrow down the odds a little bit. What about a motive? Who amongst you most wanted to see Herbert dead? Hmm?